And it's a very, uh, very good schedule that we're going to focus on in the upcoming sessions all over. So for the three days, stay tuned all the time. We will have a very good time and you get to listen to all the renowned speaker around the world. So without further ado, let me uh, give you a small guidelines for the participants. So all of you are here. This is a small guidelines for your few. Be on time whenever you're attending the session. Be prepared, make sure your laptop is charged. Uh, be presentable whenever we are taking group photos and also be a good listener. Chat responsibly, respect others, all the participants and communicate if you want to uh, you know, make some networking and also minimize distraction. So the first session that we are having today is the, our opening ceremony for our second Crete Summer School. So in order to facilitate that, we have a very good moderator from Taylor's University, Dr. Shantini Turai Selvam. Dr. Shantini is from Taylor's University and going to moderate this entire opening ceremony. So I will give the floor to Dr. Shantini. Dr. Shantini, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Rupa. Selamat datang and a very warm Malaysian welcome to all speakers and participants to the second Crete Summer School on Innovation and Technology in Tourism to Achieve SDGs, starting today until 25th August 2022. Today, we welcome more than 200 participants in this opening session from many countries, making this truly an international event. In September 2015, the United Nations General Assembly adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development that includes 17 Sustainable Development Goals or popularly known as the 17 SDGs. Building on the principle of leaving no one behind, the new agenda emphasizes a holistic approach to achieving sustainable development for all. Tourism's role in achieving the 17 SDGs can be significantly strengthened when sustainable development becomes a shared responsibility and moves to the core of decision-making within the tourism sector. A more sustainable tourism sector that can contribute to the SDGs in five key areas. Firstly, sustainable economic growth. Secondly, social inclusiveness, employment and poverty reduction. Thirdly, resource efficiency, environmental protection and climate change. Fourthly, cultural values, diversity and heritage. And lastly, mutual understanding, peace and security. In this regard, the theme for this year's Crete Summer School is on innovation and technology in tourism to achieve SDGs. We have an exciting three days and 12 sessions with 39 international tourism experts from 12 countries in the field of tourism innovation and technology research. Topics cover a broad range of areas, including metaverse and innovation, smart tourism, destination governance and management, community and indigenous tourism, fighting climate change, sharing economy, green innovation, heritage tourism, accessible tourism, technology and event management, and many other inspiring areas of innovation and technology to achieve SDGs. We are proud to welcome Malaysia's Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Yang Berhormat Dato Sri Haja Nancy Shukri to officiate this event. Let's hear her message. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Professor Dr. Nithyanathan Ari Ragavan, Executive Dean, Faculty of Social Sciences and Leisure Management Taylor's University. Dr. Dirk Glazer, Director, Sustainable Development of Tourism, United Nations World Tourism Organization or UNWTO. Associate Professor Dr. Sayyid Mustafa Rasul Limanesh, 
Head of Research Director, Center for Research and Innovation in Tourism of Crete. Associate Professor, Dr. Joachim Diaz Suiro, Head of School, School of Hospitality, Tourism and Events. Distinguished professors, researchers and academics from Australia, New Zealand, France, Finland, Oman, United States, United Kingdom, Spain, Greece, Philippines, Malaysia, and students from universities across the world. First and foremost, it gives me great pleasure to be here today, and I would like to express my gratitude to the organizer for inviting me to the launch of the International Crit Summer School 2022, or also better known as the Center for Research and Innovation in Tourism, Crit by Taylor's University. I appreciate the efforts by the Taylor's University and the School of Hospitality, Tourism and Events in initiating this program to foster and support Malaysia's future sustainable development and contributing to achieving the 17 UNWTO Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs through tourism domestically and internationally. Congratulations on organizing the second International Crete Summer School. I hope this program will provide a worldwide platform to enrich the knowledge among students, researchers and faculty fraternity in the area of tourism and SDGs through a series of 12 exciting and up-to-date sharing sessions by international speakers. Ladies and gentlemen, the COVID-19 pandemic has brought to the fore the critical importance of sustainable tourism. When international borders were closed concurrently, we saw the need to revolutionize re the industry to protect the social, economic and environmental well-being of the industry by taking into account the current and future impacts altogether addressing the needs of visitor economy. This visitor economy makes a significant contribution to a country's growth and development, going beyond appealing attractions to become a key contributor to economic progress. The spread of the COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in a 180-degree shift in Malaysia's tourism sector landscape and planning. As a result, the tourism industry's economic activities such as accommodation, transportation, shopping, food and beverage, and event planning must be proactively and innovatively adjusted to ensure its sustainability. Realizing the challenges of restoring the tourism industry's competitiveness the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, we call ourselves MOTAC, has launched and is currently implementing a series of initiatives aimed at revitalizing and transitioning to a more sustainable and resilient future. The endemic phase, as well as the relaxation of additional restrictions, such as the reopening of the country's borders, has accelerated the recovery momentum and re-energized the economy. Since Malaysia reopened our international borders in April 2022, we welcome more than 2 million tourists with an estimated 8 billion ringgit in tourism receipts. Malaysia's economy expanded by 8.9% in the second quarter of 2022, led by the services and manufacturing sectors, followed by the construction sector. The services sector generated 506.5 billion ringgit in revenue, representing a 25.2% increase. The wholesale and retail trade, food and beverage, and accommodation segments all contributed to the increase. Meanwhile, the total number of people employed in this sector was 3.8 million. The tourism or the visitor economy is bouncing back faster than the current carrying capacity and now is the greatest time to understand 
emerging tourist behaviors and trends so we can encourage more sustainable behavior. Ladies and gentlemen, to ensure a more sustainable ecosystem, MORTEC is currently implementing the National Tourism Policy 2020 to 2030. With four strategic actions as a transformation strategy toward achieving UN SDGs, they are firstly, advocate responsible tourism at environmentally fragile areas, for example, preparing tourism management plans at World Heritage Sites, national parks and tourism islands to ensure sustainable tourism and within carrying capacities. Secondly, manage the development of tourism islands in synergy with conservation. An example is repositioning tourism islands into premier ecotourism destinations to attract sustainable quality stays. Thirdly, practice inclusive tourism development to include women, youth and disadvantaged groups by reinforcing the role of tourism as rural development catalyst. A successful example is our signature homestay program that has been running since 1995 and we are currently facilitating the transformation of registered homestays into vibrant variants such as Kampong Stay. And fourthly, develop a data reporting mechanism for sustainable tourism that is aligned to the UN SDGs. This includes monitoring the tourism industry's contribution to the UN SDGs by establishing a data collection mechanism aligned to UNWTO sustainable tourism indicators. We hope that these action plans will be a vital pivot for sustainability and all of us need to work together to overcome barriers and achieve them. It is about taking action now for 50 to 100 years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, the theme of innovation and technology in tourism to achieve sustainable development goals for this year's event is also in accordance with the Malaysian government's initiative to revive the tourism industry in the post-pandemic and to implement the notion of sustainability. It goes without saying that technology can open up market opportunities to communities and businesses with more effective information management, decision-making and stakeholder engagement to protect and preserve the natural economic, socio-cultural, and heritage environments. Hence, I believe this program will serve as a platform for all of us to foster a sense of community and encourage peer-to-peer -peer interactions on how technology can offer powerful and practical changes in managing the sustainable development of tourism. Before I end, I would like to take this opportunity to urge all tourism industry partners to take advantage of a knowledge sharing session to leverage tourism innovation toward the future of sustainability. Let us come together to build forward better and rebuild tourism into a more resilient and stronger industry. Thank you. Terima kasih. Thank you and terima kasih yang berhormat for officiating the second Crete Summer School. Indeed, we will remember your message to use this platform to, if I may quote you, foster a sense of community and encourage peer-to-peer -peer interactions. And how technology can offer powerful and practical changes in managing sustainable development of tourism. Next, let's hear from Professor Dr. Nitya Dandan Ari Raghavan. He is the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences and Leisure Management here at Taylor's University, Malaysia. He is also the President of ATRA, the ASEAN Tourism Research Association. Over to you, Prof. Thank you, Dr. Shantini. 
Yang berhormat Datuk Seri Hajah Nancy Shukri, Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture Malaysia, Dr. Dirk Glaser, Director Sustainable Development of Tourism at World Tourism Organization, UNWTO, Associate uh, Professor Dr. Mustafa Rasul Imanish, Chair of the Second Crete Summer School Program and Director of Center for Research and Innovation in Tourism, Crete. Associate Professor Dr. Joy Kim Diaz Soreo, Head of School, School of Hospitality, Tourism and Events. Professor Dr. John Pierre Pula, Chair of Food Studies, Food Culture and Health, University of Toulouse, Jean Jaurès, and Istia, France. Professor Dr. Penty Haddington, Gen Z Project Leader, University of Ulu, Finland. Associate Professor Dr. Karen Hughes, Tourism Discipline Leader, University of Queensland, Australia. Distinguished and eminent speakers from all over the globe. Organizing Committee, headed by Dr. Shantini Turei Selvam, co-chair of the Second Crete Summer School. Dr. Ili Chi Shiyin, Center for Research and Innovation in Tourism. Dr. Rupam and Associate Professor Dr. Tandapan from the School of Hospitality, Tourism and Events. Moderators, postgraduate students, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second International Crete Summer School 2022. This event, which is organized by Taylor's University, the Center for Research and Innovation in Tourism, Crete, and supported by UNWTO, the Queensland, the University of Queensland, Australia, the University of Ulu, Finland, and the University of Toulouse, Jean Jaurès, France, as well as the ASEAN Tourism Research Association, ATRA, indeed has grown in leaps and bounds, thanks to the support we receive from the international academic fraternities. I would like to thank our Minister of Culture, Arts and Tourism, uh, Yang Bahorma Datu Sri Haja Nancy Shukri, for kindly officiating this event today. In line with the Malaysian government's initiative to revive the tourism industry post pandemic and to dynamize the notion of sustainability. This international summer school aims to address the 17 UN SDGs from the lens of researchers and practitioners in the specific tourism field. In an inspiring keynote address, support and dynamism, she had given us a greater motivation to take this event far and further in the next years to come. My sincere thanks to Dr. Dirk Glasser, representing UNWTO, for his continuous support to our main agenda of fronting the UN Sustainable Development Goals. The theme for this year's event, as we all know, is innovation and technology in tourism to achieve sustainable development goals. We have 37 speakers, over 12 countries sharing their expertise, views and ideas for the next three days. We are also delighted to know that the registration of participants for this year's Crete Summer School stands at 1,500 registration, cumulative over the next three days. Participants are from 80 over countries from all over the different parts of the world. This is indeed a great success for a scientific event of this nature. The attraction stems from the quality of speakers and the topics. Acknowledging that the tourism industry can help to foster positive impact on the economy while preserving and promoting cultural heritage and diversity, environment and the climate, while garnering developing countries' participation in tourism and benefiting from the growth opportunities in the world trade, we should stay focused on tourism and its sustainable development agenda for the future. The COVID-19 pandemic, as uh, how the minister has said, has brought to the fore the critical importance of technology for sustainable tourism. In recovering from this current crisis, tourism planners are presented with a unique opportunity to consider tourism's role in supporting the achievement of the 2030 SDGs through the use of technology. The role of technology in developing a sustainable future for tourism has been acknowledged by the UNWTO and UNDP. Recognizing the role of tourism and its economic contribution in creating full and productive employment, 
supporting entrepreneurship, creating uh, creativity and uh, encouraging the formalization and growth of micro, small and medium enterprise, stimulating innovation, empowering people, promoting social inclusion and reducing poverty. A more robust approach towards considering tourism industry's contribution to local and global sustainability and gender is certainly possible and more so with the inclusion of innovation and technology in tourism. When we speak about technology, mobile apps, contactless payment, IoT devices immediately come to our mind as these are some of the technologies trending in the travel and tourism industries. Technology can change the way people travel by providing convenience, safety with fewer touch points. In fact, technology was one of the key factors that has contributed to the travel boom prior to the pandemic in 2020. Technology for sustainable tourism provides businesses with the opportunity for more effective information management, decision-making and stakeholder engagement to protect and preserve the natural, economic, social, cultural and heritage environments. With regards to the economic dimension, technology can open up market opportunities to communities and businesses which never had this opportunity before. This provides tourism players and participating communities a broader range of employment with entrepreneurial growth. There are a range of technology-based tools which can be used for tourism planning and development in combating climate change, such as geographical information systems. This helps in realizing environmental sustainable development goals. To conclude, given the impact of COVID-19 pandemic, it will be interesting to assess how all these possibilities of technology inclusion in the various aspects of tourism businesses and economy play out in the operational realities, and more so its impact on sustainable development goals. Before I end my speech, allow me to thank Associate Professor Dr. Mustafa and his organizing team, led by Dr. Shantini, for putting up such a fantastic showcase of this year's summer school event. Thank you and enjoy the summer school program that we have lined up for you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Nitya. Your message rings through in the areas of the challenges faced by the tourism industry post pandemic. And yes, tourism hopes to assist in many areas, especially as you have mentioned, employment, economic growth, stimulating innovation, reducing poverty, and opening up market opportunities. Next, let's hear a message from Dr. Dirk Glasser, Director of Sustainable Development of Tourism at the United Nations World Tourism Organization. Good afternoon, dear participants to the Second Center for Research and Innovation in Tourism Summer School. My name is Dirk Glaser and I'm the Director of Sustainable Development of Tourism Department at UNWTO. We here at the World Tourism Organization know that determined and knowledgeable action is much needed to advance sustainability, meaningful and help building resilient society. Before the start of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2018, 1.4 billion travelers crossed international borders. By 2030, UNWTO forecasts international tourist arrivals to reach 1.8 billion and domestic tourism has an even larger and impressive dimension. How to manage this impressive growth is up to us. Today, I want to draw your attention to one of the most pressing issues, climate change. The tourism sector is highly vulnerable to climate change and, at the same time, contributes to it as tourism operations result in the emissions of greenhouse gas emissions that cause global warming. Threats to the sector are diverse, including extreme weather events, insurance costs, security issues, water scarcity, biodiversity loss, and damage to destination assets and attractions. It can lead to reduced attractiveness of destinations and reduced opportunities for local communities. Destinations, especially as small island developing states, are among the most vulnerable. In December 2019, at an official COP25 site event, UNWTO, in collaboration with the International Transportation Forum, released an, uh, the research on tourism transport related emissions that pointed to a 25% increase of CO2 emissions by 2030 
from the 2016 baseline levels against the current ambition scenario. Accelerating climate action, therefore, and tourism is of paramount importance for the sector to move forward in line with the international climate targets. Such targets are set out in the Paris Agreement, limiting global warming to the well below 2 degrees Celsius and pursuing efforts to limit temperature rise further to 1.5 degrees Celsius, and supported by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Research. Underlying the need to halve global emissions by 2030 and transition to net zero as soon as possible before 2050. UNWTO is committed to strengthening sustainability and the resilience of the tourism sector by increasing the climate ambition of the tourism stakeholders. As the world faces an interrelated health, climate and biodiversity crisis, there is a need to rethink the tourism sector its interaction with society and other economic sectors, natural resources and ecosystems, and impacts on climate. In preparation for the United Nations Conference of uh, the Parties on Climate Change, COP26, which has been held in Glasgow in November 2021, the Glasgow Declaration has been created to ensure that the tourism sector takes strong action and commits before and after the COP to reduce emissions by at least half over the next decade and to reach net zero emissions as soon as possible before 2050. The Glasgow Declaration defines a clear and coherent sector-wide commitment and approach to climate action over the next decade. The commitments that the Glasgow Declaration proposes to its signatories are endorse the global commitment to at least half emissions by 2030 and reach net zero by 2050. Deliver climate action plans within the next 12 months of signing up or updating existing plans and implement them. Publicly report on targets on an annual basis and align with the five shared pathways to accelerate the transformation capacity of the tourism sector. These are measure, decarbonize, regenerate, collaborate and finance. Work in a spirit of collaboration, share best practices and solutions and disseminate information. Today, there are already more than 600 signatories to the declaration, among them very important players such as Accor, Booking, Expedia, Intrepid, Bata and WTTC. To conclude, I would like to say that we at the World Tourism Organization believe in the power of tourism as an instrument to build a better world for people and planet. I just showed you how this is possible and how we were aligning actions on core issues. Action and implementation is what is most falling short, especially in tourism. I hope you will address this challenge effectively over the next days and help accelerate action in tourism and beyond. I thank you again for the kind invitation and wish you all a wonderful event. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Dirk, for your strong message on fighting climate change resulting from tourism operations. We hear your key message of the need to halve global emissions by 2030 and transition to net zero by 2050, as well as the power of tourism as an instrument to build a better world for people and planet. Moving on to the next item, I would like to invite Professor Jean-Pierre Poulain, who holds the Chair of Food Studies, Food Cultures from the University of Toulouse, Jean Jaurès and Istia, France. Good morning, everybody. I'm uh, Professor Jean-Pierre Poulain. So let me congratulate the organizer of this event. I was uh, watching uh, a picture. It was the first meeting for research in Taylor's University, organized in partnership with Toulouse University. And uh, uh, at that time, we were 17 years ago, uh, Professor Nityananta Ariragaban was the head of the school. And uh, we can have a look on the journey, uh, not too bad, in a so short time uh, to be today with this very, very important event. Congratulate to the one who have organized it under the leadership of Dr. Mustafa and all the team. 
So, the topic is sustainable development goals and the place of tourism innovation in this game. We can have the feeling that it's a very, very, very old topic. The awareness starts uh, uh, with the Club de Rome in 72 and the big Earth Summit of Rio de Janeiro in 92 was also a very important time in the development of the awareness that the climate change and the model of development will have to be reorganized, reformed, improved. In short, we can identify three main periods of time. The first one uh, was uh, the development of awareness of uh, the tourism organization and actors that uh, our activity could have an impact on the environment. Uh, we love in tourism the most beautiful place in the world, but they are at the same time the more fragile and we have to take care and to be careful of the positive and negative impact. The second period of time was uh, the economical perspective. In fact, from the early beginning of the theory of economy, of tourism, the question of the amplificator effect of tourism and the repartition of the benefits of tourism was, was in the scope, was in the theoretical framework. The sustainability have improved and make the focal, the focus on this question in a deeper way. The third period of time was uh, the social impact of uh, uh, tourism and the, all the negative effects that we have to prevent and to uh, uh, reduce. Transformation of society, the sexual tourism, all the negative effects was uh, the concern of this period of time. <clears throat> Perspective of the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals have transformed a little bit in a global perspective the question of development and thinking how tourism can play in different level a role it's for itself a new perspective. In fact, we need to think how the question of innovation could take place in this context. The first one could be a theoretical innovation. The theoretical background or organization of the way to think the sustainability uh, is based on the three classical pillars, economic, environmental and social. But from long time, we sociologists, anthropologists, social scientists, politists have some difficulties to manage the global idea of social. In fact, social and cultural have probably to be distinguished. It's not exactly the same level. And when we have a multicultural society and tourism, it's a multicultural activities at different levels, at the level of the customer, for sure, but at the level also of the workforce coming from different parts of the world, trained in different systems and gathering in the same organization. This question has to be reorganized and reanalyzed. That's the first theoretical innovation. The second one is uh, the question of the virtual tourism. We have learned a lot with uh, this crisis and it's only the beginning with this COVID crisis. Probably the alternative is not virtual tourism versus traditional tourism, but how we can do an hybridation between virtual tourism and classical tourism. And that means for us to think in another way the economical model of virtual tourism, to not, cons not do it as only a communication system, 
but something that is a part of the economical model and how people who are producing this experience can get a part of the benefits. The last one is the question of the robotization and the development of uh, some new technology. It's a very complicated question because we are, when you pronounce the name of robot, we have all in mind Charlie Chaplin and the modern time. In fact, robot and humanization of robot, we have begun to use a lot, a lot, a lot of system that help us in our everyday life and professional life. And it's the beginning of a new area and a new way to think the social and technical organization of tourism. I wish you a very good meeting. I'm sure that you will enjoy all the fantastic experts that the team of Dr. Mustafa and Professor Nitya have gathered around this theme. Have a good work and see you soon. Thank you, Professor Fulan, for speaking of awareness of tourism and its actors, the contribution of innovation in the form of theoretical innovation, virtual tourism, social and technical organization of tourism activities. Next, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Petty Haddington. He is the Gen Z project leader to represent our partner university in this second Crete summer school, the University of Ulu in Finland. Top of the morning to you, Professor Penty. Thank you very much, Dr. Santini. Uh, let me just share my screen and my slides. So hang on a second. Okay, here we go. Uh, let me just check something. Okay. So my distinguished fellow speakers, the organizers of the second GRID Summer School on Innovation and Technology, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the invitation and the opportunity to bring you greetings from Finland, the University of Oulu and the Genset Project. The world is undergoing a digitalization megatrend, and this is manifest in different ways and in different paces in different parts of the world. But generally, digital technologies are becoming more ubiquitous, invisible and intelligent. They are shaping the ways in which we communicate and interact. They are posing new questions and challenges for learning and education. They require new working life skills and capabilities. They are changing our everyday lives and the ways we spend our free time. And they bring with them new important ethical questions. In view of these challenges and changes, and in order to make possible better digital futures, it is important to explore the ways in which we can strengthen and renew the skills and capabilities of humans and humanity in the emerging digital era. And this is what the GEMSET project does. I'm very happy to notice that the Gen Z project and its aims are strongly present also in this summer school. The Olu based research teams in human geography and tourism are tackling questions related to digitalization and tourism, and especially from the perspective of the Gen Z cohort, so those who have been born between the mid 1990s and the 2010s. More generally, the Gen Z project tackles digitalization from three perspectives. First, it calls attention to the co-evolutionary processes between humans and emerging digital technologies. So for example, how do humans grow up with and live their lives alongside digital technologies? How are digital technologies embedded in human everyday lives? How does the entanglement between humans and digital technologies shape our lives? Another significant consideration revolves around the co-creation of our digital futures. 
So who are the people that co-create or could take part in the co-creation of digital solutions for the future? How can we include people from various backgrounds to engage in the design and development of digital solutions? And how can we engage and empower people, also those who have often have a marginalized position in, in the uh, de development of digital solutions, to act as active agents and active makers in their digital lives, rather than just passive consumers. And finally, by exploring co-evolutionary processes between humans and digital technologies, and the different ways to co-create emerging digital solutions, Gen Z aims to strengthen humans and humanity so that they can manage disturbances and remain functional while undergoing changes. That is, we can increase resilience at individual, organizational, and regional levels. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to show a short video that gives a bit more information about the Gens of Project and its aims. And while we're watching the video, we can enjoy beautiful winter images from the city of Oulu and Finland. Okay, finally, I would like to direct your attention to the Gen Z white paper, which is openly available online. In the white paper, dozens of researchers at the University of Oulu have taken part in considering questions and challenges related to the uh, how we related to the issues of how we could strengthen human competencies in the emerging digital era. The themes in the white paper are discussed in view of different global megatrends and United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I wish you all a successful and very rewarding summer school. Thank you, Professor Petty. Thank you for highlighting the importance of how human sciences are shaping digitalization, especially in human and emerging digital technologies, co-creation of our digital future, and release resilience the use and developing of development of digital technologies. Next, I would like to invite Associate Professor Dr. Karen Hughes. She is the tourism discipline leader representing our partner university, the University of Queensland, Australia. Good evening, Dr. Karen, over to you. 
Thank you very much. The Tourism Department at the University of Queensland is delighted to be co-hosting this summer school. Many of our research projects and courses focus on the importance of sustainability. It's critical to convince the industry and tourists to behave in a responsible manner and to design tourism experiences that enrich and enhance environments and societies. Tourism needs to be innovative, daring and creative. And here at UQ, we believe technology is a fundamental part of achieving sustainable tourism practices and goals. Our department's flagship project is the Global Sustainability Lab, led by Sarah Domnicher. The lab consists of many sensors that are installed at tourism businesses, and these sensors automatically measure environmental performance, including water use for the entire business, water use at specific taps or in showers, electricity use overall, and at any individual device that is plugged into the PowerPoint and food waste. The lab has a special dashboard system that allows managers to see the data for their own business almost in real time. And this allows managers to benchmark their performance against other similar tourism businesses. For example, a three-star hotel without a pool can compare itself with another three-star hotel without a pool. This anonymous comparison allows managers to identify areas where they can make improvements. Managers can also team up with our researchers to develop and test ways to improve performance. This can lead to cost savings for the business because food waste and electricity are incredibly expensive. Um, and we can help them work out where and how to make reductions without undermining guest satisfaction. All the sensor measurements provide information about direct carbon emissions. If tourism businesses upload their expenditure data, we can also calculate indirect carbon emissions. That's carbon emissions that are generated in the supply chain. This information empowers tourism businesses to select their providers carefully and allows them to minimise carbon emissions. But our sustainability research is not all high tech. Uh, for example, my PhD student interviewed Chinese tourists visiting Central Australia about the photographs they took with their mobile phones. And through interviews, she was able to explore their thoughts and reactions to the unfamiliar desert environment. And from this, make recommendations about how to present and interpret these landscapes to Chinese tourists. I'd like to hand over to our department's expert in tourism technology research, Associate Professor Pierre Benkendorf, to talk further about some of our other projects and initiatives in this area. Thank you, Associate Professor Hughes. It's a great pleasure to, um, to be here to join you um, from the University of Queensland here in, in Brisbane, Australia, where we've just had a lovely um, winter's day um, down here in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, I'm just going to extend a little bit on what uh, Associate Professor Hughes was talking about, tell you a bit more about uh, some of the work that we do here at the University of Queensland. Our um, Behavioural Science Lab is another centrepiece of the um, research capability that we have in this area of sustainable tourism and um, technology. And, and the lab features a range of equipment from eye tracking technologies and virtual reality to EEGs, heart rate and other biometric response uh, measurement tools. So we can use these tools to explore human behavior in real time by measuring levels of arousal, stimulation and emotional responses to environmental stimuli such as advertising, signage and other aspects of visitor experiences. Some of these instruments are also mobile so we can take them out into the field to see how tourists respond in a real setting. Um, this creates really exciting opportunities for new methods and, and new research in sustainability and, and uh, the technology really helps us um, with, with that work. For example, we recently compared visitors' reactions to um, real and virtual reality snorkeling experiences. And we found that the virtual reality experience is just as effective uh, as a real world experience in persuading people to engage in environmental conservation behaviors. So we may not need to take visitors into really fragile environmental areas to achieve the same outcomes around uh, conservation. We're also using eye tracking, EEG and emotional um, expression measures to determine what elements of Indigenous tourism advertisements are more likely to appeal to potential tourists. Um, so you can see the potential there 
uh, in addressing some of the sustainable development goals around um, Indigenous communities and Indigenous people. More broadly, uh, we've been developing uh, an area of focus around social media influences. We know that influencers are very effective communicating certain values and behaviours to their followers. So here at UQ, one of our recently graduated PhD students looked at the topic of live streaming and how live streamers build relationships with their audience. Another PhD student is exploring the very interesting topic of virtual influences. And these are influences who are computer generated, but they are managed usually and presented by marketing firms as real characters on social media. And it turns out that some of these virtual influences have lots and lots of followers, millions of followers in some cases. And these followers often show higher levels of engagement than they do with real influences. So we think there's enormous potential to use real or virtual influences on social media to drive messages and campaigns about sustainability and conservation um, in tourism. These are just some of the many projects we're conducting um, to uh, explore the use of technology and to advance and support sustainable tourism. We look forward to talking with you some more over the next few days and um, learning uh, some more details uh, about um, how we can all um, work together um, to use technology and innovation for a more sustainable future. Thank you. Thank you, Associate Professor Hughes and Associate Professor Beckendorf for sharing your thoughts on how tourism needs to be innovative, daring and creative, especially in the areas of water, electricity and food waste. Yes, if you can calculate your carbon emissions, you should be able to re reduce them as well. Uh, thank you as well, um, Associate Professor Beckendorf, for sharing your, your research on uh, behavioral science labs, the use of this technology to measure human behavior in their tourism, real and virtual experiences. Last but not least, it gives me great pleasure to invite the Director of the Center of Research and Innovation in Tourism, Crete here at Taylor's University, Malaysia. Let's hear from Associate Professor Dr. Mustafa Rasulimanish. Thank you very much, Dr. Shantini. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Young Perhormat Datu Seri Hajan Ansi Benti Shokri, Minister of Tourism, Art and Culture, Malaysia. Uh, Professor Dr. Uh, Nitian Adan Ari Ragavan, Executive Dean, Faculty of Social Sciences and Leisure Management, Taylor's University. Uh, Dr. Gert, Dirk Glasser, uh, Director of Sustainable Development of Tourism, UNWTO. Uh, Associate Professor Dr. Joachim Diaz Suero, Head of School, School of Hospitality, Tourism and Event, Taylor's University. Uh, Professor Dr. Jim Pierre Poulan, Chair of Food Studies, Food Culture, University of uh, Toulouse, Jean Jaurès, and Istia, France, as uh, our university partner for this event. Uh, Associate Professor Dr. Karen August and uh, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Uh, Pierre uh, from University of Queensland, Australia. Uh, Professor Dr. Penty Haddington. Gen Z project leader, University of Ulu, Finland. Uh, all distinguished speakers from 12 countries uh, that we will have during these three exciting days in summer school. My colleagues in organizing committee in, uh, that uh, work together for uh, a few months to organize this event. And the uh, dear participant, from more than 80 countries. Uh, hi, and uh, on behalf of the Center for Research and Innovation in Tourism, Crete, I would like to welcome all of you to the second Crete Summer School on Innovation and Technology in Tourism to Achieve SDG, to Achieve Sustainable Development Goals. The Crete Summer School on Tourism and SDG was initiated uh, last year, and we started this event 
from last year to work around sustainable tourism mm -hmm. and to explore and investigate uh, uh, a big question, sustaining the tourism industry or contribution of tourism to bigger concept of sustainable development. What we mean with the sustainable tourism. Mm -hmm. Last year, we had uh, uh, several sessions to answer this big question and uh, study and investigate around this important question. In, port uh, in particular, after COVID happened, uh, this question uh, changed somehow to uh, an, another question. And another question actually was added to this. We need to think about survival or sustainability. Now, which one is important? Tourism industry shut down last year, and uh, we need to think about how tourism can be survived. So this is the time to talk about sustainability, and the uh, sustainability still is important in no visiting, no tourist era. Before COVID-19, actually there were uh, many hot topics around the sustainable tourism concept and the contribution of tourism to uh, sustainable development and SDG. Some concept like uh, over tourism, carrying capacity of destination, but not only physical and uh, environmental mm -hmm. carrying capacity. Also, uh, a social cultural carrying capacity of destination. Green practices uh, in hospitality by uh, uh, hotel guests and restaurant guests, and uh, uh, actually pro-environmental behavior and pro-sustainable behavior of visitors and tourists. But after COVID happened, actually COVID put a stop on all these issues, most of these issues. So people in industry and in academia started to think about survival, how tourism can survive from this disaster and this crisis. And sustainability became a secondary concept. Sometimes mm -hmm. sustainability actually became uh, a, a non-important concept because uh, people think now all need to think about survival, not concept of sustainability. But what happened now? Uh, after one year, I'm referring to a previous year summer school that we struggle with this question, survival or sustainability. But now we know most of, uh, in most, most of countries and destinations, domestic tourism already has been started in full capacity. Borders are open to international tourists, and number of international tourists are increasing in most of countries. Just now, we had the summer in northern uh, hemisphere, and in many of destination, if you look at some images in many of destination, we can observe over tourism. Over tourism came back very very fast after opening the borders and also uh, for domestic tourism. And many other issues related to sustainability, critical mm -hmm. concept of sustainability started again. Those issues that uh, hidden during COVID. So now we can feel, we can clearly feel that, yes, sustainability still is very important and one of the most critical concepts that we need to think for tourism. We need to ponder and find solution for more sustainable future for tourism. Sustainability is not something that we can ignore because of COVID and because we need to think about other concepts. On the other hand, COVID-19 <coughs> pandemic accelerated application of an adoption of technology in different manners for tourism. During COVID, 
we observe many innovation and uh, adoption of technology happen. And we can observe that technology helped tremendously to tourism, different uh, part of tourism to not only be resilient and survive during COVID, but also be more sustainable, more inclusive, more accessible. When we look at virtual tourism, we can see virtual tourism can create a platform, more accessible and inclusive platform. So in, uh, no longer is a fun thing. Actually, this type of tourism can be more uh, uh, accessible for different group of people, for senior people, for disabled people. So we understand that for a critical issue of sustainability and the same time tourism be resilient, the uh, adoption of technology and the role of technology is very critical. Also, this is confirmed and acknowledged by UNWTO and UNDP report that uh, they uh, highlighted the importance of technology for uh, to have and to develop a more sustainable future for tourism. Technology can uh, contribute in different ways to bigger picture of sustainability. Technology, by adoption of technology, we can have stronger and more stakeholder engagement in uh, tourism to protect natural and cultural heritage environment. We can, uh, by adoption of technology, we can open up market opportunity for communities, for remote areas. So this create more opportunity for inclusiveness. Also, <coughs> adoption of technology can help to fight climate change and develop more environmental sustainability, sustainable tourism for destination. So we can see the impact of tourism, the role of uh, uh, technology, the role of technology to have more sustainable and at the same time, more resilient future. So because of this concept, we decided this year, we focus on for the summer school on tourism and SDG. We focus on uh, the role of technology. So the main theme of this year is uh, technology and innovation in tourism to achieve SDG. We will have, uh, after this opening session, we will have 11 sessions uh, from today until Thursday and uh, uh, with the uh, 33 distinguished speakers, the best of the board. So we gather all of them to discuss about this concept and how technology and innovation can apply, can adopt in tourism and the health tourism industry to be more resilient and also more sustainable and contribute more to achieve SDG. We will have two more sessions today after this opening to talk about innovation and technology in general in tourism to achieve SDG and also innovation and technology and destination governance and uh, management. Uh, tomorrow, we will have five sessions to discuss about different topics related to main theme of the event, like smart tourism and SDG, community and indigenous tourism, uh, fostering innovation to fight climate change in tourism, innovation and technology and pro-environmental behavior of uh, tourists, and sharing economy and sustainable tourism development and uh, concept. And uh, Thursday, we will have four sessions to discuss about green innovation in hospitality, heritage tourism, innovation for accessible tourism, and also adoption of technology and event management and SDG and sustainability. We hope this uh, second Creek Summer School uh, with this main theme, innovation and technology in tourism to achieve SDG, uh, uh, create a platform for great learning for all of us in tourism academy and tourism industry and uh, help us to understand better the role of innovation and technology to achieve SDG. 
wish all of you a very fruitful and exciting uh, three days and summer school with the, the best speaker and distinguished speaker around the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mustafa, for highlighting the need to discuss survival of the tourism industry. We have now come to the conclusion of our opening session. Allow me to summarize what we have, the speakers have brought or highlighted in this session. Yang Berhormat, Datuk Sri Haja Nancy Shukri, Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, emphasized how technology can offer a powerful and practical changes in managing sustainable development of tourism. Professor Nitya touched on how tourism can impact positively on achieving Agenda 2030. Dr. Dirk focused on action and implementation in fighting climate change. Prof. Bulan mentioned how innovation can contribute to tourism activities and also robotization. Prof. Penty, thank you for sharing the research on the Gen Z white paper. Dr. Karen and Dr. Pierre, on their research activities to measure human behavior, tourism activity. And finally, Dr. Mustafa, how the COVID-19 pandemic has challenged the tourism industry and tourism activities, as well as helped to accelerate the adoption of technology for sustainable development and creating a resilient future. I would like once again to thank Yang Berhormat Dato Sri Haja Nancy Shukri for launching the second Creek Summer School and all the speakers at the opening session. Thank you for sharing your key messages on tourism, innovation, and technology, all the way from Malaysia, France, Finland, and Australia. Thank you very much, Dr. Shantani, for excellently moderating this session.